Just how important is water in the production of Scotch whiskey? Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm going to do a review of the Ardbeg Oodle. But before I get into this whiskey, I want to share with you my notes on uh, the importance and use of water in whiskey production. So how important is water? Well, water is one of the three key ingredients for producing whiskey in three general categories. First, water goes into the spirit that is added during production, or production water. It is used in the mash tun to make the wort, which goes through to fermentation and eventually ends up in the stills. Second, there is water that does not go into the final product, but is needed in order for the equipment to operate during the distillation process. We might call this process water. This water is used in the boilers to make steam that heats the stills and to cool the condensers and for a general cleaning in the distillery. Third, water may be used to reduce the whiskey finishing water from cast strength to bottle strength at 40% alcohol by volume minimum. Many distilleries emphasize that their water source is naturally filtered through limestone which removes any iron which is why most and arguably the best Bourbons come from their state. In a similar fashion, some Scotch distilleries will emphasize their water source as being a contributing factor to the flavor profile of the whiskey. Some assert that the fact that their water runs through peat, such as at Laphroaig, or is free from peat, such as at Glen Goyne, makes them distinct from their neighboring distilleries. However, the real impact of the water source on the whiskey is probably minimal as it has been argued that the stronger flavors of alcohol and the many new flavors imparted to the spirit during maturation override any influence from the water. While there might be a slight impact on fermentation efficiency, it is not believed that water is a major contributory factor to a whiskey's final flavor. So the name of this whiskey comes from its water source, Lake Ugadol. Uh, however, um, the significance is really its supply rather than any particular flavors or anything like that. So mostly what you want is clean water and cool water and a really, really good source of water. Alrighty, uh, before I get into this uh, bottle, uh, here are my notes on this whiskey. First launched in 2003, Ardbeg Ugdal is a marriage of some young and some very old Oloroso Sherry Aged Single Malt along with Ardbeg Aged in X Bourbon Barrels. The name Ugdal means a dark, mysterious place. It is also the name of the lock from which Ardbeg gets its water. The whiskey is not a statement. It is bottled at 54.2% alcohol by volume and prices range between $57 and $65 in the United States. So for some, the Ugadol is the top of the line for core range of Ardbeg. There are a couple others that would be a close contender, but I think there are some slight nuances between this whiskey and a couple others that are really going to depend on what you really, really are looking for. So this whiskey really has a nice counterbalance between bourbon cast and sherry cast. You do get the sherry cask influence, you get the fig, the dates, Raisins are sort of dried black fruit character, but it's not a sherry bomb in your face uh, Say like maybe like Glendronix or some Macallans or uh, some uh, Avalar or other distilleries that use a heavy sherry cask influence But they're definitely there You get a little bit of uh, Sultanas there The peat and the smoke is really interwoven really really nice with those uh, dark black fruit notes a little bit of salty sea breeze, hints of chocolate, vanilla, caramels, almost like a fudge-like character to it. A little bit of spice, perhaps just a hint of, just a whiff of a black pepper. All right, on the palate. Mm. A little bit sweet, silky smooth. Up front, you get the dried black fruit notes, fig, dates, raisins. Then comes the chocolate, vanilla, caramels, and then you get a little bit of 
just a kick of spice on the back end. And interwoven with all this is just a, a whiff of smoke and some nice sweet chocolate. Mm. I like the progression of this whiskey from front to mid to finish. I think it's well balanced. Really nice long finish. You could put some water on it. You could put an ice cube in it and it would do just fine. But I like it just as it is. All right. What would I give this a, in terms of a score? I'm going to go solid 93 points. 93 points. Really, really like it. Now, I've got it down to about here. I've had this for a little while and uh, really enjoy uh, getting back into it. You know, in, instead in whiskeys and getting to know whiskeys, yeah, sure, you want to get past the neck pour, but, you know, spend some time away from it, months, years, and then come back to it and see if your perceptions and your memory of that whiskey remains as it was as you first tried it. And I'm actually liking it more now. Perhaps it's just my mood uh, now than I think I did before. This is an absolutely uh, fantastic whiskey. And it's going for a, still a really great price. A lot of other distilleries, such as uh, the McAllen and others, um, um, Blair, are jacking up their prices. Ardbeg, at least on the core range, seems to be holding back. They are not been, uh, you know, letting loose with the prices due to tariffs and everything else. Either that or the inventory here in the United States is still sufficient to keep uh, prices uh, reasonable. So, um, seeing that this bottle is, I've only got about a third left, I may run out and buy another one really, really, really quick. All right, uh, if you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. If you want to be notified when I go live or post a new video, you're going to want to hit that bell and uh, share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.